Good morning to all the beloved of God, and welcome to the Cypress Space Gathering to celebrate the goodness, the greatness, and the glory of God, our Heavenly Father. <clears throat> and I want to thank and praise God today that we can still lift up the name of Jesus in cyberspace and glorify his magnificent and holy and wonderful name. Here at Greater Faith Grace Bible Church, we're taking a temporary pause from our regathering for health and safe for all the attendees due to the uh, recent spike of the COVID-19 cases in our county. And this will be a week by week as our leadership team assess the, the information and the data as it comes in to make sure that, again, all of our members and attendees' safety is of utmost concern for all of us. Now, I hope you and your family had a really, really good gathering on Independence Day, a time of grilling and chilling and very enjoyable for the entire family. <clears throat> also, uh, my wife and uh, my, my, my son and his wife, Adrian, came up from San Diego to get a taste of Inland Empire heat. They miss it so much, can't get a taste of the heat today, so praise God for that. Now, if this is your first time uh, with us here in cyberspace, could you uh, please take a, a brief moment and text hello, H-E-L-L-O, to 909-875-4891 so we can connect with you and pray for you and keep you informed about the ministry and various events. Now, uh, as we celebrate God's glory today, uh, please uh, leave us some comments on our Facebook or website. We want to know what you think, and all feedback is greatly welcome and appreciated. I also want to thank my family for uh, double duty this morning. They they helped me get set up, and I'll also be singing this morning some songs of praise to exalt them with Jesus Christ. Today we're going to have communion celebration virtually, so I hope you have some bread and some juice ready. And above all else, may God just richly bless your family in a very special and, and great way today. And may this cyberspace victory celebration to you be meaningful and be memorable. We praise God for this here. And now my family's going to give us a song, then I'll come back with the scripture and prayer, another song, then we have communion, and then go forth with the word of God. So again, welcome you to welcome to Greater Faith Grace Bible Church home version of worship service. God bless you. Come on. 
Come on now. I know. Do you know? I know. We know. Never. Never. Never has. Never will. Come on now. Never, never. Never. Never, 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 never. never. Lost battle. You can do all. You can do all things. You can yes, do yes, all yes, he can. Yes. Things, but Cause you never lost a battle. No, you never lost a battle. And I know. No, I know. I know. You do you know that? Win. Hey. Never, never, never. So glad. That's God. He's a battle axe. <laughs> he's, he's a king. He's a conqueror. Never, never. No, you never lost a battle. Come on now. I know. I know. You never will. You can do all things. Yes. You can do all things. Yes, again. Yes, God. Because you never lost a battle. No, you never never lost a battle. Come on now. I know. I know. I know. You never Are you watching? Do you know it? Hello, do you know? Belita, do you know? Regina, do you know? Let folks know in your comment section. Yes, yes. Never, never. I know. I know. Sing that song. Sing it. I know. I never. Hey. Come on now, sing it. I know that's right. I know that's right. Everything. Never lost a Never. Never. Never lost a Never has. Read this word, you'll see it. Read this word, you'll see it. Never lost a Never. He's a winner. God's a winner. Never lost a Never. Never. Never lost a Never. Ain't that right? Ain't that right? That's your testimony. That's our testimony. Oh, thing. Yes, he can. Never, never. I know, I know. Come on now. Yes. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> wow. Praise God. Come on, y'all. Clap along with us. I think cyberspace. Clap right along with us. Amen. We know that our God has never lost a battle. Just take time to read God's word and you will see he has never lost a battle because he's the almighty one. Thank God for song this morning he's never never lost a battle hope that really bless you and encourage you but what you're going through with god on our side we are winners uh, every day of our lives amen with that being said we want you to have our scripture and then i pray then we have another selection we have communion and then i will share with you the word of god the word of truth i'm going to read for your encouragement this morning and for your inspiration from the book of 1st John chapter 2 and verses 1 through 4. 1st John chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. The Apostle John 
pens these words. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is a propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. By this we know that we have come to him and know him if we keep his commandments. The one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. May God's word be fulfilled in our hearing this morning. <clears throat> Let us surrender our hearts to God in prayer. Holy Father, we come to you this morning rejoicing because you have brought us from the dominion of, of Satan into the kingdom of your dear son, Jesus Christ. You have redeemed us, rescued us, and reconciled us back to you through the blood of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. For that we're grateful. We thank you this morning, Father. We are partakers of your divine nature and that you have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places and now, O oh God, we proclaim that we are your sons and daughters. Thank you, Father, for this day, the opportunity to gather in cyberspace of people of like precious faith to celebrate your goodness, your greatness, your glory, and your power. I pray today, Father, that you will speak to us. Let us lean forward and desire to listen to you, Father, hear your voice. And then make quality decisions, O oh God, that will transform our lives to be more like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May each and every household that is gathered today, Lord God, fill them, overwhelm them with the awesome of your, awesome of your presence, Father. Speak love, speak joy, speak peace into their hearts today, Father. And Lord God, whatever they may feel a little downcast about, today, Lord God, be the lift of their heads. Shine bright in their hearts, O oh God. Hear their cry and their prayers, Father. Protect them and keep them, Lord God. Draw them near and nearer to you, Father. And I pray, God, that our hearts are truly touched and moved by your power and your spirit today. So that when we do the benediction today, Father, that we can truly say, God, you are good. You are so good. I love you more and more. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Man. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now another selection. This, let's enjoy this selection. You, you, at home, you can sing along with and raise your hand. Just, just act like you're right in, in the sanctuary right there because your home right now is a sanctuary. So God bless you. Amen. <clears throat> Sing, sing. Yes, Lord, yes, 
Yes. This is our song and prayer for you. Yes, this is our song and prayer to you. God be gracious to you. Real good, real good, real good. And keep you. Let his face shine and be gracious, be gracious to all of you out there. The Lord turn his yes, Lord. Face you. Oh, lift your hands and praise him right now in your living room where you may be right now. Sight for you, Sister Horton. Yes, he's for you. Not again. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Glory. Yes. That's good to know that God is for you and not against you. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Yes, be upon you. He said, Come on now. Yes, yes. Come on now. 
every generation. Yes, yes, yes. Your rear guard, all around you. Yes. He is with you. He is with you. In the morning. Yeah. And you're calling, yeah. And you're calling, yeah. And you're weeping, Come on now. Yes. 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 Every day. Yes. Yes. Come on now, one more. For Jesus, give it up to Jesus, amen. We, we can clap out in cyberspace. Come on, we can clap out in cyberspace. Bless God, amen. This is great. Thank you again, my family, for that beautiful song. There, may the grace be upon you, may God's favor shine upon you. What a great blessing, amen. Praise God. That song really blessed you and encouraged you, and you really know that God's favor is upon you and that He is definitely for you and never, never, ever against you. The Bible says, Oh, God, before us. Really don't matter who's against it, God is always on our side. Praise God. Man. Well, now we're going to have our communion, our cyberspace communion. So it's virtual communion. So I pray that you have got to have some uh, grape juice, some cranberry juice, or something that you could uh, simulate the uh, blood and the uh, body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Whether it's water or just people's loaf of bread. It's not the elements, the idea of what you're doing in representing about the Lord's death, burial, and his resurrection, amen. And here, and we do this every first Sunday. We celebrate the Lord's communion time of thanksgiving. The Lord's Supper was instituted by our Lord Jesus Christ himself prior to him going to the cross and dying on Calvary's hill. We praise God for this time today. And there's a scripture I want to read to you from Luke chapter 22 and verse uh, 14 and 15. Luke 22, 14 and 15. This is when our Lord Jesus Christ was gathering with his 12 disciples in the upper room and preparing for this right. He says, uh, when the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And in verse 15, he says, he says in verse 15, praise God, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Notice the words. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Amen. And just like our Lord Jesus Christ, he earnestly desired, it was a passion to do this with his disciples. And we today, we, we should earnestly desire to be at the foot of Jesus. We should earnestly desire to look to the time when we will be with him in heaven. Jesus desires communion with us. And we should also desire that same communion with him also. He desires fellowship with us. We should also desire this fellowship with him also. Let us pray. Father, the greatness of your love, it passes all human understanding and comprehension. And through this here communion, we get a 
little glimpse into the depths, the magnitude, the breadth, the height of your love for us and sacrifice your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, for us. And Father, we look back at the cross of love and we look forward to a day of hope of being with you again. Father, I pray that you would bless each one Particularly see this virtual communion today. We thank you that the bread reminds us of his broken body. We thank you that the drink reminds us of his shed blood. So, Father, I pray that we could take these elements in such a way that honors you and glorifies our relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So now we take this bread and drink this drink in remembrance of him. Amen. 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 In remembrance of him. In remembrance of him. God bless. God bless. Amen. 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 Again, I want to welcome all of you who are took time to join us in on cyberspace. For this worship celebration, it's a blessing, an honor, and a privilege to be able to share with you today the great and wonderful Word of God, the transforming truths of God's Word. And I do pray that we really will bless you and encourage you and uh, strengthen you in your walk, daily walk with God. This is a blessing today to share with you and God's given me a word today. I want to continue on in part two that I started last week, the agenda of the Christian life. The agenda of the Christian life. And before I go to part two, I just want to kind of go back and, and bring you what was shared in the first week of last week, uh, the first seven today. I'll, I'll conclude with the final seven today. And may God richly bless you through this right here. We talked about the Christian gent is to shine, Philippians 12, Philippians 2, 14 through 15, to do all things without grumbling and disputing, that you may be blameless, innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, whom you shine as lights in the world. The second talked about the gent is to run, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27. Don't you realize that a race everyone runs? But only one person gets the prize. So run to win. We run to win. Number three last week was we're to help. So Philippians 3, 2, it says, I, Indeed, true companions, I ask you to help these women who have sh shared in my struggle in the cause of the gospel. We're to help each other to learn and to live for Jesus Christ. And number four, we was to sow. Galatians 6, 7 through 9 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. But the one who sows his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. And then we talked about number five was to fight. To fight. 1 Timothy 6.12 says, Fight the good fight of true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life which God has called you, which you have confessed. So well before many witnesses. And then number six was to pray. First Timothy 2, 1 through 4 says, First of all, I urge that petitions, prayers, and intercessions, and thanksgiving for all men, for, for kings and all those in authority. Why? So that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. And then in number seven was for Matthew, we are to fish. Matthew. He said before 18 to 19, one day 
as Jesus was walking to the shore, Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon also called Peter and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they had fished for a living. Jesus called them out, come follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And so we are called on a different agenda, a whole different program, and that is a Christian agenda. We're on God's agenda, not on the world's agenda. And so today I want to conclude with part two of the agenda of the Christian life. So we say number eight is to grow, to grow. The agenda of a Christian life, we need to grow. Ephesians 4, 15, Ephesians 4, 14 to 15 says, then we'll be no longer like immature, like immature children. We won't be tossed and blown by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with their lies so clever that they sound like the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. And because we are born again as believers, we have to be consistent in our Christian growth and maturity. And it takes diligence. It takes being in God's word, praying and seeking the face of God that we will know what the word of God says. Because we are newborn believers. And therefore, as, as a child comes to the world, as, as a physical child, we expect that child to grow, to mature, to go from infanthood to children, to teenagers, to adult, on up the ladder there. And we're the same as believers there. We are constantly to be growing in Jesus Christ. Amen. So, see, as we grow, we're not going to be tricked by all the deception of the world out there. We'll know the voice of God and obey the voice of God. In fact, 2 Peter 3, 17, 18 says it this way. He says also, he confirms it with the Apostle Paul. He says, therefore, dear friends, since you know this in advance, be on your guard mm -hmm. so that you are not led away by air of lawless people and fall from your own stability. The, the people out there trying to lead you away from who you know as God. Mm -hmm. And then it says in verse 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and the day of eternity. So God commands us to grow. So on our agenda is to grow. We ask ourselves, from the time that you first believed, whether it was uh, five years, 10 years, 20 years, or a few weeks ago, how have you grown? What do you know more about God now than you do when you first believed? Have you grown in your faith? Are you are you more knowledgeable of things of God? Do you, do you see God in different perspective each and every? Are you growing in your faith? And, he, and a greater faith, Grace Bible Church, there's really no excuse for anybody not to grow. We have Bible study on Wednesday nights. We have Sunday school on Sunday mornings. On our website, we have Right Now Media, a free library of thousands of videos and teachings you can go and look at absolutely free. We have our spiritual formation classes. We have worship time on Sundays. We have prayer meeting. I mean, there is no excuse for believer not to grow in Christ. So we, we gotta make sure that we're doing all we can to grow in Christ. So that's our agenda is to make sure that we are growing in Christ. So again, I ask you the question, what are you doing to feed your soul to make sure that you are growing in Christ and not becoming stagnant growth? And then next on the Christian agenda is to imitate. We are to imitate. Ephesians 5, 1 says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. Imitators. I guess what amazes me is sometimes that we as as uh, Christians, we know more about the world, imitate the world more than we do God. Who we imitate, who, who we actually, who, who, who do we look like? Do we look like, walk like, talk like believers? We imitate God as beloved children. God is our example. God is our father. Make sure our life 
imitates him and him alone. Uh, uh, it's amazing. Sometimes as believers, we walk around looking more like the world and less and less like God. Who are we imitating? You know, uh, it's a blessing when you imitate someone. Many of us, you know, as parents, maybe had kids. And uh, when our kids were young, how they imitate us. They were dressed like their mom or dad and say things. They say, well, you act like your mom or dad. They're imitating us. And that makes us feel good when our kids imitate the good things about life and life and so God feels great and it makes God just smile when he sees his children imitating who he is walking in love walking in peace joy happiness and sharing the gospel imitating Jesus Christ amen and then it's in Hebrews 13 7 it says it says remember those who lead you who spoke the word of God to you encouraging the result of their conduct imitate their faith Amen. What it means is, you know, as we see our spiritual leaders, those who are walking with God, who are holy and loving, living for God and doing and doing the will of God, we as need to imitate what they're doing. Amen. Walk it, walk it and do what we see them doing. Amen. Have the right imitation in life. Amen. Too many of us, we're imitating the uh, high and the mighty and stuff like that. No, no. We need to come and say, I want to imitate and walk like God. And then 3 John 1 11 says, that's right here. Beloved. Wow, this is tough, right? Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. The one who does one who does good is of God, and the one who does evil has not seen God. Mm -hmm. And that speaks for itself right there. Do not imitate what is evil. We're to be loving and kind and gracious and let our life be a reflection of who God is, what God can do. Amen. And number three, on the Christian agenda is to be used or to be or to be beneficial. In Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to 8, it says these words right here. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in teaching. The one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who acts of mercy with cheerfulness. The Christian agenda is to be used. Use me, Lord God. God's given us gifts and talents in the body of Christ. And we're to be useful to God. Whatever God has blessed you with, when God has blessed you with a gift or a talent, God was not just thinking about you alone. He was thinking about other folks also. That's why he gave you that gift and that talent that will be used for his glory. So we, we all have different gifts. We all have a different DNA. We all bring something different to the body of Christ. And we're to use that to benefit the body of Christ. So we need to make sure that as believers, we serve, serve well. If we teach, teach well. If we exhort, exhort well. Lift people up, build people up. Yeah. Contribute with generosity. The one who leads with zeal. Yeah. One who acts of mercy, do it cheerfully. What do we do? We do it for, for God's glory and for God's honor. So we're to benefit the body of Christ. So don't, don't ever say that you have uh, no skills and no talents. When you say that, when you say, I have no skills, no talent, no ability, you are really insulting God. You're insulting God saying, God, you may be given no gifts and no talents, no ability. Yes, God has given you gifts and talents and ability. Use them. Do not insult God's intelligence by saying, I have no gifts. Yes, you have a gift, amen. You have a talent. You have a skill. Use it for God's glory. Just as Jesus says, uh, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. There is something you can do to serve the body of Christ. We are to be used. So he said, God use me until you cannot use me no more. And when God has finished using you, he'll just call you home. Praise God for the glory then, amen? In the meantime, make sure your gifts are being used for God's glory, the talent you have, but don't set it aside there. Use for God's glory. And then, <clears throat> 
Fourthly, we are to compete. Compete. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.5 says, Also, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not win the prize unless he competes according to the rules. People of God, as Christians, we're in a fierce, fierce competition. Make no mistake about it. We are competing daily, daily, daily. It is a battle against the flesh and against the spirit, against evil and against what is good. And it is a competition out there. And we're fighting the enemy every single day. That's why Paul says to put on a foot arm of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We have to compete as an athlete. You know, you look at athletes, how hard they train how hard they work because they want to become the ultimate competitor and they train they work hard they get up early in the morning they work out they run through all these they stay late at night they train they train they train so when they go out to competition they've been the tip top shape they can be in and we can we can learn a lesson that right there we need to compete by spending hours time meditating praying reading seeking the word of God. Because we go out in the world and the enemy attacks us. If we're not equipped, if we've not trained ourselves, we, we're gonna fall by the wayside. Amen. The, the, the first little uh, the first little jab, we get knocked out, amen. Because the devil always jabbing at us. First little jab, we get angry, frustrated, knocked out. Why? Because you have not trained yourself, amen. The duck and dodge that jab, amen. And come to the devil with a roundhouse blow and knock him out of the head sometimes, amen. Stop getting knocked around. Compete, train, amen. He's going to throw stuff at you there. I mean, train, basically, we train by the word of God. The Bible is the rule book. And by grace, we can compete according to the rules. Read God's word, amen. Train ourselves. Work hard at it. Uh, this, th th there is people. There is no shortcuts to spiritual maturity. Do you think, for instance, that LeBron James became a good as by, by taking shortcuts? No, no. They worked hard every single day. When other folks were sleeping and, and out having a good time, he was in the gym working out, get better and better and better. And we must also, uh, when people out there lolly, we must be saying, I need to get in God's word. I need to pray to seek the face of God because I want to compete. I don't want to be a wimpy Christian. Amen. And right now, you know, uh, it's, it's a shame, but there are really some Christian out there who are just kind of wimpy. The first thing that comes their way, they just fall by the way. So they get frustrated and stuff like that, you know, and, and like, uh, like it tells in Jeremiah, it says, uh, if you faint, with the foot soldiers, what you gonna do when the horsemen come? Mm. Come on now. Mm. If you faint over little small things, what you gonna do when big things come your way, huh? Right, yeah. If you can't have a little small insult, which is something big comes your way, be strong in the Lord. We have to compete, people. So be a competitor, amen. Be a fierce competitor. We, like, like, the, like we sang song earlier, God has not lost a battle, amen. Right. But we gotta prepare for the battle, amen. Right. Amen. Prepare, compete, get ready. It's a fight out there. And next one is uh, on the Christian agenda, we are to reach. Reach. Philippians 3.13 says, Brethren, this is Paul saying, Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. Paul says that that stuff behind me, I forgot about that. That's past. I, I forgot about that stuff. I have a bigger prize in mind. I'm going to forget old situations, old pain. I'm going to forget about that stuff. And I'm going to reach. I'm going to stretch forward to what lies ahead. Eternity lies ahead. So we strain, we stretch, amen. And some of us... Um, we're just too comfortable and too satisfied in our current old sinful world right now. Mm. This world is not our home. It's not paradise. 
Paradise was lost back in the Garden of Eden, but it's regained in the book of Revelation. So don't think this world's your home and everything will be nice and pretty and beautiful. No, we are here temporarily and we need to be straining and reaching forward to the goal of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So some of us, we're still hanging on to the past, all the past success, all the past. That is past, I mean, you cannot live in the past. We must live looking forward to the future, reaching, straining, amen. So ask yourself right now, what are you reaching forward to in Christ? Are you satisfied with yet right now? Are you, are you forgetting about those things behind you and looking forward, stretching? I'll give you an example here. Some of you uh, football fans, uh, and praise God, it's going to start up pretty soon. Hopefully, we'll be back on those. Mm -hmm. And uh, on, Jesus. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden, uh, Sunday become, becomes God, the football God, show up again. Amen. <laughs> well, that, that's how it is, you know. That's, but, but, you know, and as you watch football, <laughs> praise God. Yeah. Amen. Well, you know, we've got along so far with our basketball. We can get along with our football, can't we? I don't know. <laughs> that might be a stretch, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> amen. Praise God. God is good, amen. Anyway, you know, uh, when, when you watch when you watch football games sometimes, and uh, give an example right here. Uh, you see a, uh, a football player, they have the football and run toward the goal line. And then they uh, get tackled real short of the goal line. They take the football and they like stretch it forward, trying to stretch past the plane. They are stretching, trying to get past that goal line so they can get, get six points. I mean, they're stretching forward that football, leaning with all they might. And they're not looking back who's behind them. They're looking back who's behind. They look, they're stretching, stretching forward, trying to get to that goal line. And they're struggling. They're pushing with all they might to cross that goal line so the ref can raise hands and say, touchdown. And that's what we as Christians we are close to the goal line. The song says, I'm too close to turn around now. I'm going to stretch to that goal line. And I'm going to wait for Jesus to raise the hand and say, victory, you made it across the goal line. So we're going to stretch people. It's a struggle. It's a real struggle. Because you see a football player that's holding back. They're pulling it back. But he's stretching all his might, reaching and stretching and trying to get across that goal line there without fumbling the ball. Mm. Amen. So we... So we Take that idea. We want to be stretching, reaching. We see the goal line within our distance right there. The enemy trying to tackle, hold us back, tie us up, ball us down. We're going to stretch and lean forward and watch Jesus say, touchdown Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then, then also, two more here. Number six is, on the Christian agenda is to give. Mm -hmm. Give. Somebody say, ouch. 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 <laughs> to, give. <laughs> to give. I don't like that word, to give. I like to, I like to receive. <laughs> Amen. But the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Yeah. Now, in Luke 6.38, it says this right. Luke 6.38, it says here, give. Now, this is Jesus saying, so pay attention. Jesus says right here, he says, give, and what, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, be poured into your lap. That's four things right there. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. Notice it says, poured, not dipped, not dripped, poured into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Our agenda as Christians is to give. Give when you feel like it. Yep. Give when you don't feel like it. Yep. And give until you feel like it. Yep. <laughs> Just keep on giving. Because, you know, uh, as believers, we're born again by the Spirit of God. And therefore, with God being our Heavenly Father, we take on the spiritual DNA of our Heavenly Father. Just like our natural children take on the DNA or the characteristics of, the, of their uh, earthly parents, we say, well, you know, you're acting like your mom, acting like your dad, because they have that characteristic right there, because that's in their DNA. When we're born again, 
we also have a brand new spiritual DNA. And this DNA, and one of the things about God is God is a giver. He's a giver. The Bible says, for God's soul of the world, he gave. God just gives and gives and gives and gives. I mean, throughout the whole Bible, God gives. God gives. And so we're born again of God. That, that becomes just natural to us to give. It's just like breathing. We just give. And so we just give. It says give and we'll be given to you a good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. And just like uh, um, with the uh, food ministry, the church, the food ministry, we've been giving out food, and every week God just keeps blessing and blessing and blessing more and more food to give out. We're just just giving it out, praise. We're giving we're giving it we're giving it freely, and therefore we're giving it also freely. So I'm saying, when you give your time, your talents, your treasure, your testimony, let me give them back to you. And I know, uh, uh, speaking to the Christian family, the, the body of Christ, uh, universally, uh, since the uh, COVID-19, uh, some people have still continued to give, and some folks have kind of cut back on their giving, because, well, the church not gathered, so I ain't got to go and give. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 that is, that is, that, that's a life in the pit of hell. Just because you're not at the church physically, it's not an excuse for you not to say, well, I, I'll just bypass giving. No, you, you can give online, you mail your checks and whatever it may be, but continue to give and it will be given to you. Given to you. That's a promise. That's a promise. God said it'll be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. We sing the song, you can't be God's gift. In fact, God will not let you out give him. It will not happen. Give. And be given back to you. So that's on, on the uh, Christian agenda is to give. And then finally, the last one for the day, my brothers and sisters, because as I sum, as I sum these seven up here, the reason you're able to do these these first, these six, Reason you can imitate, be used, to compete, to reach, to give. Another seven I gave last because simply because we follow. We are to follow. John 10, 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them intimately and personally i know everything about them i know they're down sitting in the uprising under the going under coming in it says and they follow me say it again my sheep hear my voice i know them and they follow me see when we become god's child through faith in jesus christ we have to tune in to hear his voice. And people, there's a lots of voices out there. We hear on news media, on in cyberspace, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. It's lots of voices out there. And sometimes those voices become so distracting, we cannot hear those voices. And we have to make sure that we tune in to K God, K G O D. Mm -hmm. And listen to God's voice, amen. Listen to the voice of God because uh, it's not shouting, it's not screaming, amen. Just, just as I, as as a, uh, as the prophet um, says in the book of, in the book of uh, First Kings, Elijah says it was a small, still voice that I heard, amen. And we know them and follow Jesus. You know, uh, I remember when I was like a little little boy. And uh, we'd be outside playing out in the streets and in Ontario, all my cousins, other kids playing in the big old park right there. And then uh, of all the kids out there, my mom would say, Harry Lee, I knew her voice, she's calling me. And I would come to her, amen. Other kids, they wouldn't, they, they didn't hit my mom calling their voice. I knew the voice, we must know the voice of Jesus. We must know his voice and follow him. And see, we're listening to many, we're listening to voices, the high and mighty, rich and famous. Yeah. And then we're following them, you know, and it's about, you know, 
people got I'm following somebody on Twitter on Instagram why are you following them, folks right what are they leading you to we're trying to find the most followers follow Jesus and follow me follow me he says my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me there's a song we sing years ago uh, in the old days it says uh, follow Jesus if he can't take you to the top, can't nobody else can. Follow Jesus. Follow him each and every day. And uh, follow Jesus. We get in this word. We read his word. Like it says in uh, Psalm 32, 8. Lord, teach me and instruct me the way I should go. And counsel me with your eye up on me. So I ask you right now. Who are you following? Who are you following? And we followed these here, high and mighty people, you know, and the, we wear their, their uniforms, their jerseys, their hats. And all we're doing is making them rich. <laughs> and they're not giving us a dime for following them. <laughs> we, 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 we'll pay uh, $300 for a jersey or, or a hat or something like that there. And, and, and they don't, don't even know our name. They don't know who we are. All they see, all they see is the bank are going ching, 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 ching. And we're following them. We got to follow Jesus. That's our agenda is to follow Jesus. Don't follow the world because they will lead you astray. Follow Jesus. There's a song that we don't sing much anymore, but it sure does uh, speak today. It simply says, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Verse 2 says, Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, no family, no friends go with me. I still will follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And the verse 3 says, The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. Let's not be a turncoat. Let's follow Jesus every step of the way. He says again, my sheep, hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. They follow me. So again, those are the concluding seven Agenda for the Christian agenda. But as I closed last week, I close it the same way. These 14 agendas of the Christian life are by no means conclusive. As you read God's word, study God's word, you will find more and more things that the Christians we need to be doing to live the life that pleases God. See, a Christian's life our agenda is totally different from the world's agenda. And as we know better, we should desire to do better. Mm -hmm. We have an agenda. We rise up and say, God, what is your agenda for me today? What do you want to take? What do you want to leave? What do you want to show me today, God? What is your agenda for me today? I want to follow you, Lord God. I want to imitate you, Father. I want to grow, Father. What is God? What is the agenda for me to grow? What is the what is the agenda for me to give, Lord God? Lord God, what is the agenda for me to reach? Lord God, what is the agenda for me to compete? Lord God, what is the agenda for me, oh God, to be used? Lord God, what is the agenda for me, oh God, to make sure I imitate you? What is the agenda? I want to get on God's agenda, not on the world's agenda. And so the Holy Spirit has uh, revealed some transforming truths to you that you need to make some major adjustments in your life. Major adjustments. Major tune-up, perhaps. Again, we say, we look at those 
responsive questions acronym spec spec as you heard God's word today we go to spec again it means uh, S P E C K as you listen to the songs the prayer the word of God this morning S is there a sin for me to avoid or confess Think about that. What you heard today, did God show you a sin that you need to avoid or confess? This is personal inventory time, my beloved. P, as you listen to God's word this morning, is there a promise from God for you to claim? Was well, something said to me and say, wow, that's a promise. I need to claim that promise and believe it. The C for spec. I'm sorry, E. Is there an example for me to follow? When I heard God's word this morning, is there an example for me to follow? And then C. When I heard God's word this morning, is there a command for me to obey or a change I need to make? And then K. But I heard this morning the scriptures. How can those scriptures increase my knowledge about God or about Jesus Christ? What I'm saying, my fellow brothers and sisters, as I close out, unless we learn to take action and apply the scripture truths to our life, we will not grow in grace and knowledge of him. We will not be good imitators. We will not be able to compete. We will not be able to follow. These things we must do. Let us pray. Almighty God. The God of heaven and earth. So oftentimes we. Get so trapped. And sucked up and sucked into this world. That we actually. Seem to have amnesia about the Christian agenda. We find ourselves more focused, more in line, more in tune to what the world is saying, doing, and thinking. And so as we gather today in cyberspace, we thank you, Father, for the opportunity today to readjust, realign, refocus our hearts, our minds, and our spirits back to the true agenda that is to follow jesus and father i ask in the powerful name of jesus by the blood of jesus we knew we all have sinned to come short of being on the agenda that you've given us we ask you father forgive us we are sorry restore us father Help us, O oh God, to get back on your agenda and walk in ways that pleases you. But we know we have an arch enemy out there, the world, the flesh, and Satan. It's always trying to steer us away from your agenda to the world's agenda. So, Father, help us put blinders on our eyes and to look forward to the cross and not looking back at the world. Thank you, Father for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. For as the world is falling apart, we are falling in your hands, O oh God, to know that you are still God, and beside you there is none other. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now those out there today who may watch for the first time, and you want to come into God's kingdom and become a child of God, here's what you must do and need to do. Simply believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Trust in him. Say, God, I repent of my sins. I'm sorry for being on my own agenda, not following you. I'm sorry, Lord God. I'm going to now believe the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ lived. He died. He was buried and rose again. I'm going to believe that Jesus Christ is God's only son. And I put my faith in him, I would have an eternal life. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, He that 
believe it in Jesus Christ, will not be ashamed. Say, Lord, I believe. And once you do that, you need to confirm that by calling or texting three people, putting on your social media page or calling the church or putting on our on our website that I believe Jesus Christ. I trust my Lord and Savior. I want to welcome you to God's family through faith in Jesus. God is so good. He loves you. And also, finally, those who watch the program, you want to uh, leave an offering of bless the ministry. You can uh, send a check to Greater Faith, Grace Bible Church, P.O. Box 1149, Rialto, California. Or you can go online to our website or you can text 4Gs, that's the number 4, J-S-U-S, to 73256. Again, thank you so much. May God bless you. Be safe, be strong, and stay on God's agenda. Till next week, I love you. God bless. Bye-bye.